cube. Okay, so. Uh, we have no one in our party. We're gonna fix that now. Let me know if everything still looks, looks and sounds good. Computer has thoughts and opinions about your headset. Yeah, Windows audio in general is just terrible. I know of multiple streamers who every time their Windows updates just completely breaks their audio setup for their stream. Fingers crossed, I've been- I haven't had quite that much misfortune, although Silver has, on occasion. Um, so. Uh, we need- we need some new characters. Um, I did, as I mentioned, go to the Discord of the lovely Xandra Mandra, and I got two volunteers. Well, first, um, we need to briefly go over what happened last stream. We finished up floor B8, we started floor B9. We also permanently lost two characters, um, because I tried to resurrect them. Mario the cat says hi. Um, tried to resurrect them and failed twice, so uh, I need to give a proper salute to Wag.com the Thief, and another proper salute to Snurgly the Cleric. They join Shubes and my original mage, whose name I have. The, the death is somewhere in my archives. I've honestly forgotten who the original mage was, to give you an idea of just how often people die in this game. Despite that. No. Just... <laughs> yes. Okay. Despite that, I asked for volunteers and I got two new volunteers to, to step up here. So, let's create some characters, shall we? We need to create. Alright, first off. Uh, say hello to Toast, or full Discord name, uh, or full online handle, Sacrificial Toast. You okay, yes. Um, that's good for... Yep, okay. Uh, alright, that's not a lot of... It's not a whole lot of health, but that's okay. Um... This is mostly just going to be a grinding stream anyway, so in the very long term, it should all even out. <laughs> uh, Toast will be a priest, we will keep that character. And next... Say hello to Grace the Thief. Are you okay? Yes. A bit. Um, what do I want to do? I guess I just give you a bunch of... Um, Something like that will work, I think. Okay. Okay, keep this character, yes. Alright, so, next thing we're going to do. Let's go to the tavern. Um, I will just briefly note, Silver and Mercury have both all gained, have both gained several levels. Silver is now level 83, Mercury level 54. You can see they each have about 100 more hit points than they did when last we saw them. Kyle I also a ton more hit points. I'm going to remove Silver and Mercury. I'm going to add Itsudemo. As well as our new recruits, Coast and Grace. And Coast and Grace require some equipment. options are here. Okay. Do, 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 do. Um, I'm gonna kind of cheap out on their equipment for now. Do, 
Now I'm going to the maze. Uh, let me just equip everybody here. Alright, Rathnir, God's Armor, God's Shield, the Helm of Evil, Ozo Copper. The book, do not use the book. Yep, Mace of Power, Tree of Leather, Buckler. Sure, Ring of Movements. Itsu has the Coin of the Damned. I need to remember that. Can't equip that. Don't invoke that, don't invoke that. Do equip the Mace, the Chainmail, the Shield, do equip the Short Sword, Leather, Armor, Buckler. Um, can I, I wonder, can I use the, I think I've tried this already. What? Okay, no, so completely powerless. Okay, so, now that we have created the characters, we need to go to, you can also see I have B9, selectable. Um, where am I trying to get to? I am trying to get to here. Uh, and Luna is immediately having PTSD flashbacks. fine, everything's fine. We will not be grinding here all the two hours. I just want to get, I just want to get Toast and Grace enough hit points that they can survive a couple rounds getting tagged by AOD armor, by Kaz armor. I just need them each to get to about, I don't know, 15 hit points. So it should get them to level 5 or 6, which should be enough. Yep. Yeah. yeah. 13,000. That should be good. Okay, so now I can lower back. Be making, uh... <laughs> making Kyle a mage before turning them back into a fighter, besides giving me the option to pseudo Malor and map. Also has the advantage of I can just Malor to him from grinding immediately, which is nice. All right, Kyli, one hit points. All right, so, all right, Toast gains four hit points and some new spells, neat. More new spells and five hit points, neat. New spells and one hit points. We're gonna be getting a lot of one hit points here, I imagine. Oh wow, 14 hit points, even though their vitality is terrible. Okay, one hit points. One hit points. One hit points. One hit points. Five hit points. One hit points. Okay, so 17. Alright, that should be enough, though, to get to what I need here. Um, okay, so we are going to wrath in your unequipped God's Armor. God's Shield, Hold of you, Copper. Look, no. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna try something. I didn't think that was gonna I had never actually tried to Malor directly to B9. <sighs> right, yeah. Yeah, the alignment thing is one of those things that I feel like they carried over from... Yeah. I want to check something. I want to check something else quick. Um, I want to actually check my roster. I'm just curious about something. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's okay. That is. Yeah, that is actually quite funny. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. If you remember the last stream, I pulled some shenanigans with the Staff of Nilda, and uh, you would actually come in as the credits were playing. Long story short, I pulled some shenanigans with the Staff of Nilda, and I mentioned that what happens normally is the character that returns the staff to the castle gets the mark of Nilda, and then you can pick other characters who help them out, and they get the Knight of the City award. Um, 
I pulled some shenanigans such that four different characters, in such that I had a four-character party return to the surface with the staff. And the game gave all four of them the mark of Nilda. <laughs> Which is actually quite funny to me. Just as the strong okay. Um, it may do something in the post game here. Otherwise, the answer is nothing. It's just a it's just a neat status marker for your character. Um, so in the PC versions of Wizardry, and actually, this I think these versions too. Um. Basically, in everything but English console ports, you can kind of easily transfer your characters from game to game, or at least transfer them forward through games. And so the idea is they acquire more and more of these symbols as they beat more and more of the games. Uh, I think it goes up to Wizardry 5, and then Wizardry 6 it just starts a new trilogy. Hi, Mario. Okay, you're gonna have to stop this. I'm gonna kick you out, okay? Not time yet. So, um, another interesting thing is that a character in this particular trilogy can have the Mark of Nilda and Night of the City simultaneously. Um, in the NES version... In the NES version, the Mark of Nilda supersedes the Night of the City award. If you set the value, set the, uh, the memory address such that you have both of them, it only displays the G. Um, in this particular trilogy, they give you little symbols. In the PC version and the NES version, they're basically just keys on the keyboard that serve as symbols. So, beating Wizardry 1 got you a, uh, a greater than sign, I believe. Like up here, in this kind of row. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but it's it's in that row where you can see the uh, the two little symbols there. It would get you a greater than symbol. Beating Wizardry Five was an at mark. Beating Wizardry Two, uh, Wizardry Two was either a G or a K. Three, I believe, you actually got two symbols. You got a symbol just for transferring the character into Wizardry Three, which I believe was E. And then actually beating. The, uh, beating it got you an asterisk, which was, I believe, called the Star of Lil Gammon, so. Uh, but as far as what the mark actually does, basically nothing. Uh, actually, that's not quite true. That's not quite true now that I think about it. Um, the marks are what get you into the post-game in the, in the NES and the Game Boy Color versions. It's two different post-games, depending on which version you're playing, but, um... So that's how I initially got to floor 7, was taking one of the characters back down with the Knight of Diamonds equipment to where you would normally get the staff and sort of finish the game. Uh, okay, all that said, let's, uh, let's go fight some Knights of Diamond armor. Uh, I never actually dropped the armor, did I? Okay. So now that, uh, now that I'm confident, uh, that Grace and Toast can survive this if they get hit, Now we begin, uh, we begin the long, arduous grind. We're gonna be here a while, folks. I don't know how long I'm gonna do this for. But, uh, get comfy. Get cozy. Nope, I don't wanna drop the item I've equipped. Thank you. I do need to kind of... <laughs> Grace is helping. Grace just ambushed the... Ambush the armor and hit it for eight. Meanwhile, Kyle is hitting it for two hundred, decapitating it despite the fact it doesn't have a head. So, uh, with that, I hope everybody's week went well. Uh, mine went pretty well, I'd say. In my uh, semi-yearly review at work, I guess I'm doing well. Merit increase seems to indicate I'm doing well, if nothing else. So that's always good. There, who has the toast? Okay.
I don't know how high I want to build up these characters, actually. I know, I know this will get Itsu another couple of levels as well. The process of this, or at least one extra level. But in any event, so how is your uh, how is your proving grounds playthrough coming? level 11, okay. Or 13, yeah. Yeah, in my playthrough of the, uh, the Proving Grounds remake, I... I did a couple different, um... I did a sort of round-robin thing with my characters, where, yeah, I did, um... Uh, I'd have to actually go back and see what I did, but I have two samurai, which I believe just stayed samurai. And then um, I have a fighter that just stayed a fighter. And then the other three characters all sort of rotated between fighter, um, fighter, priest slash cleric, mage, and then uh, my thief I ended up turning into a ninja. So in the end, I have five characters who can all use some magic, and I believe three of which have, like, the full complement of spells. And of those three, one each can, you know, use massive numbers of charges of one of the spell schools. That makes sense. Right, because that's right. Because in the uh, in the HD remake, it works. I guess the way it worked in the original PC versions, uh, where if you don't have good aligned people in your party, you just don't get uh, you just don't get friendly encounters at all. So basically, once you swap to an evil alignment, you cannot swap that. I got the I got the double encounter. That's always fun. I think Itsu just hit nine times for 44 damage. I think I just saw that. That's actually quite funny to me. Right, yeah. Yeah, they're decently common, yeah. I wouldn't say they're... I wouldn't say they're common exactly, but you can see them in this game. They are there, even with an entirely evil party. Um, they don't do it on bosses, though, which was something that used to happen. Um, I don't know if it happens in the NES ports, but, like, in the PC originals, um... And actually, in the remake, uh, it was theoretically possible to run into friendly versions of bosses, and then you could just leave them alone. Yeah, you could run into a friendly Wordna. And just leave it alone, and I guess softlock yourself. I actually, if you go back through my, um, through my wizardry, uh, through my wizardry videos, my HD remake videos, uh, that was actually one of the things that kicked off 
the rescue mission when I lost my initial party was I got fortunate enough to... Um, I was actually fortunate enough to run into a friendly version of the... Uh, one of the, I guess you'd call it a mini-boss square, and I just left it alone. Even then, it was a bit of a comedy of errors, but I did manage to get all my primary party out, so... is running catchat.exe. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Cat, it's not even 7.30 yet. So I could go back now and level up to probably level 13 or 14 with these characters. The problem is that's not enough to let them survive particularly bad stuff, I don't think. I don't necessarily need to build everyone up to 1300 hit points, but... As you will recall, Snurdly had, I think, in the neighborhood of 250, and that wasn't enough to save them, so... Um, especially if, uh, I may want to actually swap out some of I'm actually going to swap some of my equipment around to see if I can keep my gauntlet user from getting paralyzed. I'm not sure if that's an equipment function or just a level function. I don't know. Mario goes down One neutral fighter to mage to thief, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because like I said, I um I definitely Um Yeah, I definitely had all like pretty much all my characters except the samurai spend some time as a fighter. As fighters. And just the reason I didn't do the samurai was because I didn't particularly want to make them mages. And making them fighters would mean I could not, uh... You know, they would stop learning the mage spells, so... You're at almost a half million experience points for these characters. Yep. Yeah, that's the other thing, too. Yeah. Yeah, because that's sort of the, uh, what I call the dirty little secret of ninjas. Is that, for the most part, they're not actually that good, despite their hype. Like, the idea of ninjas is really cool, but, like, the actual application, not so great. Like, the idea of them sort of getting better as they, you know, as they level up without equipment is neat, but you're still better off just putting them, just putting a bunch of equipment on them, usually. Unless you get them to a very, very high level, and even then probably want the extra hitting power of the equipment. That probably helps more so than the extra low armor class. So. Which is too bad, because I I am just a huge fan of the whole 
I know they're not monks per se, but like the the fantasy archetype of the bare-fisted warrior monk is just something I like a whole lot. Uh, the martial artist of Doom. A la the black belt in NES Final Fantasy. Just called the monk. And I believe the original Japanese version, and then some of the re-releases. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I, I appreciate that that was the idea for the, uh, for the ninja in this, but the execution just doesn't really work. And the other problem is they're hyped up as being able to disarm and inspect traps as well as thieves. They can't. Uh, they're better than a lot of the other classes at it, but they're not as good as thieves. And the difference is actually enough that, that I don't think thieves are necessarily totally redundant if you have an agent in your party. So. In any event. Exactly, yeah. See, the uh, Murphy's Ghost can only ever hit for two damage at a time, which is why I started grinding. This is why I started off grinding on Murphy's Ghosts. Um, I th think the... I think the Knight of Diamonds armor can hit for up to six at a time. So actually, if I get particularly unlucky, uh, Grace could theoretically die. If I get surprised, magic armor hits for six, and it takes two rounds, and I get bad for her. Grace gets hit for six each time. She could theoretically die here. It's unlikely. But... Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that there. There's a reason I. Yeah, there are reasons I killed so many Murphy's ghosts. And then, in this game, you know, the magic armor kind of takes that. And it takes that over. Um, the other pieces of the Knight of Diamonds gear are much more dangerous to fight, even though they do give more experience. They don't give enough more to overcome, in my opinion. overcome some of the difficulties. Like, the Magic Helmet, for instance, can just cast Tilt away. So if I get bad turn order, I could just lose everybody except Kyle in the battle. Yeah, that's true. The double encounter. Um, Wrath Get more gold. Ghost has actually killed the either Murphy's Ghost or the Knight of Diamonds armor at some point, which is actually kind of cute. All right. Yeah, exactly. No status ailments, two per hit. There's a reason why that's the grind spot. And a reason why he's in like the NES ports of this, and actually he's in the Game Boy Color port of Legacy of Logan too, though not the SNES port for whatever reason. Yeah, like I said, this is this is a similar thing where the Knight of Diamonds armor is basically Murphy's Ghost on steroids. Uh, again, one side. Once you can reliably hit the Knight of Diamonds armor, it's not necessarily safer than Murphy's Ghost, I wouldn't say that, but it's 
it's a much more efficient grind in terms of experience per minute, and it's not that much more unsafe. Um, again, all the Knight of Diamonds armor can do is attack, and it can't hit for very much. Like I said, I think it hits for a max of six. Um, yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, the main thing about the United Diamonds armor is it is very difficult to hit and it has very high points. Um, but a level... What level is Kyli? A level 126 fighter with Rathnir, one of the best swords in the game. Um, <laughs> you know, it does not particularly care what armor class you have. You are getting carved up. Uh, also, for people unaware of uh, Wizardry and its power curve, uh, roughly level 13 to 15 uh, in at least the initial trilogy is kind of considered endgame, quote-unquote. Now, there are and always will be encounters that you can just, for whatever reason, get ridiculously unlucky on or get really bad turn order on. So, you're never... Wizardry is unique like that in that you're never totally invincible. Uh, but suffice to say, the game is not designed for you to have a level 126 fighter with one of the best weapons in the game. And really good armor, too. <laughs> Can't forget that part. Yeah, basically. Yeah, 13 is, ah, you've learned everything. Um, you know. I do typically like keeping a mage and a priest around because I do, I do like, um, you, you can almost, well, here I have a bishop instead, but I, I like the, uh, I like the idea of just having max number of spell casts for one of the classes. You can have a quick fire. Ah, yes, you can, uh, as Nightbot has said, you can subscribe to the stream if you like what you see. Although, I'm going to be honest, if you, uh, I don't know what the intersection of people is, of, uh, people watching someone grind the same number of the same enemy over and over again on a Friday night and people who want to give money to Twitch streamers, but if you like what you see. Uh, yes, correct. Just much slower. I think uh, typically around level 20 or 21 is when the uh, priest and mage will max out their respective spell uh, things. It's not going to heal. Luckily, I can much as I want. Um, you can see, uh, Itsu is level 34 and is still not quite there on the priest. Play another level or two to go for that. On a Friday morning, yeah. Yeah, there, there's definitely been periods of time where I have, like, before work, no. just... Where I have before work just taken, like, 10 or 15 minutes to grind up on Murphy's Ghost. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's nice. That's cool. And do you, uh, do you do that on stream? I keep thinking I should actually follow you and then I don't do it because I am bad about that, but... Yeah, 
Yeah, I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I actually think, now that I think about it, I think we've had this conversation, yeah. Where it, like, helps stave off boredom. <laughs> Monster oh, surprise, yeah. 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 See, so if I get like particularly bad turn order, it is possible for Grace to die, albeit unlikely. Uh, how are we doing here? Yeah, we're Yeah, actually, my YouTube username is not even MPI, it's MPI.com spelled out, so. Reminds me. Uh, hopefully, if I did that right, the last link should be, yeah, that should be my YouTube channel. I have the awful, terrible YouTube link format there. <laughs> Let's gain some levels. Kylie, one hit point, not surprised. One hit point, not really surprised. One hit point, that's fine. Right. Itsu, gonna gain one hit point, great. One hit point, oh. Good game vitality, okay. Alright, Toast, let's get some levels. Two hit points and lost vitality, that's not good. One hit point. Three hit points, okay. Three hit points, yep. Two spells and one hit point. 6 hit points. 18 hit points, that's nice. And new spells. New spells and 1 hit points. Okay. 1 hit points. 18 hit points, okay. 1 hit points. 1 hit points. 1 hit points. 3 hit points. 1 hit points. 2 hit points. 1 hit points. So that's, yeah, that's really, that's still not great. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I was, uh, one of the things I've taken to, uh... One of the things I've taken to doing, um, to, like, listen to at work while I work is I actually found a bunch of, like, uh... Japanese VTuber wizardry streams, or like wizardry videos at least, and um, yeah, which I bring up because of uh, what you said there, where it's like, it's not laughing, it's not laughing at you, uh, but there was definitely one point where uh, the person was playing wizardry NES and their thief set off a stunner trap, and they just did like the nervous laugh of anguish, as I call it. And, like, I just had to laugh because I was like, yep, I, I'm not laughing at this person. <laughs> yep, it's just, you just laugh and giggle because it's like, yep, that's wizardry. That, that is a classic wizardry noise that that person just made. The, the nervous, the wizardry nervous laugh of the, the simultaneous, like, laugh slash moan. Because, as I am fond of saying, wizardry can wizardry at any time. Which is why, in part, that is why we are doing this grind. To build up new characters. Because wizardry decided to wizardry at me. 
multiple times. This month is what uh, some people in the retro game community call Dossember, where they basically just, uh, to try and spread the word about classic PC games, they just try and stream a bunch of, like, old, well, old DOS games. And I, I had thought about, once I was done with this, before I realized this had a proper post-game, and just how expensive this post-game actually was, I thought about trying to get in on that trying to find, like, another or maybe old dungeon crawler I could stream after this. I thought about maybe I have to be older, because I do own that on GOG. DOS games, yeah. Yeah, I was, uh... I actually don't know if it came out... I guess, I think it was a DOS game, it might have been early Windows. Uh, but I started playing, you've probably seen it on my channel, I started playing Syndicate before the Wizardry HD remake got announced and kind of surprise dropped. Before I was just like, we're dropping everything and playing this Wizardry remake. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, what do you think of the, uh, the 0 0.3 update to the Wizardry remake? Do have a pot of system as well. Yeah. Nine times. So, I don't... So, interesting thing about this version that I don't think a lot of the other versions have is that it looks like all of the characters get bonus attacks eventually. Ah, okay. Yeah, I uh, I have the game on GOG Galaxy, so it uh, auto-updates for me. That's cool. Um, nope, I don't want to drop that. It's, it's got a lot of uh, a new kind of old-school quote-unquote options. Okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Honestly, it's probably a good, uh... It's probably a good way to go about it, honestly, is to not let things auto-update on you. Shing. I don't know. Uh, December aside, the next game I was thinking of playing was actually not Wizardry Legacy of Little Gamma. It was going to be um, Elmen Age Original, which is... Um, Elmen Age, if you don't know, is a series of kind of wizardry-style dungeon crawlers, actually. I think done by a lot of the people who did some of the Japan-only wizardry spin-offs. I played a little bit of Elmen Age Gothic, stopped in part because Elmen Age Gothic is actually, like, I think the fourth game in the series, but it's the second one that came to the U.S. And it, I sort of feel like it relied on you having prior knowledge of the series. Like you, so it has your, you know, classic wizardry classes, but there are also other classes like uh, alchemists, which sort of synthesize items from other items. And so early on in Elven Age Gothic, like outside of the fact that 
you know, I think the manual tells you that alchemists can synthesize items from other items, but... Early on, there's a part where you have to have an alchemist synthesize a particular item to help you survive, like, an early dungeon. And the game doesn't ever really tell you this or hint at it. You're just supposed to kind of know that this is a thing you can do. So I got sort of annoyed with that. But uh, Elman Age Original is a remake of the first game in the Elman Age series, so... There's also a demo or, like, game jam version of one I found on itch.io called, uh, called Demon Lord. Which is funny because Demon Lord is actually the name of the optional, like, I guess optional super boss from the NES version of Wizardry Knight of Diamonds. The, uh, the guy I was trying to get to in the first place. large drink of water. But anyway. But yeah, so, uh, for you, or for the chat, do you have any other, like, non-wizardry dungeon crawlers that you really like? I'm a okay, so Master of Orion? That's cool. Is, does Master of Orion play like Master of Magic, by the way? I'm guessing that's what MLO is. Because I've watched people play Master of Magic, and that's one I thought about getting into, because it's... Even though it's not developed by the same company, it was published by them. Okay. It, it very much comes off as, like, a Civilization plus Wizards. Uh, I mean, one is here. Okay. Alright, I'm back. Sorry about that. And Mario the Cat is now super upset because we closed the door on him. That's... yeah. It's not the end of the world. Anyway. Um, but, uh, where was I going with that thought? Yeah, so, even though it was not developed by the same company, I think it was just published by it. Like, Master of Magic strikes me very much as civilization, but wizards! Play is very similar. Except for, you know, the additional it's a dueling slash magic element. Uh I find a book of stuff. <laughs> Seems like something I would like. And then the other one, Lords of the Realm. I don't know... I don't know that I know Lords of the Realm. It almost sounds like a janky fighting game, but I don't think that's correct. I don't think that's right. What is Lords of the Realm? Mm -hmm. 
a nation builder sort of thing, okay. Yeah, that was, uh, my mind actually went to another Koei game, uh, Limper, or I think might have been NES only, but it was, it's, it's the same concept, but it's France instead of England. Incidentally, I own somewhere here, I need to go look for it, but I actually own the Game Boy version of Nobunaga's Ambition. Um, which I never actually played a whole lot of, but I bought it because I just saw it in a retro game store, and I was like, there's no way they managed to cram all of, like, the complexity of Nobunaga's ambition into a Game Boy car, right? And, like, I looked at it, and as far as I can tell, uh, with the exception of the fact that the Game Boy version forces what the NES version of Nobunaga's ambition would call the short game, so, where you take over, like, 17 territories instead of 50. Except that it forces that? Yeah, it looks like... Yeah, it looks like they crammed all of the rest of NES Nobunaga's Ambition onto a Game Boy card. <laughs> it's quite impressive. That's cool, yeah. Equip the armor, you jack wagon. Yes, no. Yes, 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 yes. No. Okay. There we go. Okay. Fine. Everything's fine. for three. Also, I'll remind people that Itsu was never supposed to be a active character in this party. I just named my bishop Itsu in honor of the fact that Itsu was the character who got the staff of Nilda and basically finished the NES version of Wizardry 2 last time I played it. She was supposed to retire to an easy life of item identification. <laughs> um, but I... Ended up losing my mage. I may have actually lost two mages. Yeah. I lost Shubes and, again, the, uh, the original mage whose name I've forgotten. I could go back through my... Oh, nice. Aether Spoon is still around. Well, that's neat. That's a name I think I remember from the GameFAQs days. Cool. Yeah, Caster of Magic is... Yeah, it's either, like, the expansion pack or just the re-release of Master of Magic. Forget which one it is. I think I got, for free on GOG, I think I got, like, Master of Magic Classic or something like that. So. Wow, I just cracked 300 damage on that. That was 
was cool. That would have been enough to one-shot that, even without the decapitation. That was just a really good roll on that. <laughs> One point seven million, okay. Uh we are getting somewhere here, I swear. Um So I guess while I'm here killing this magic armor over and over, I can uh, I can talk about some of my other favorite streamers. Um so, first off, I should mention my lovely partner over here, Silver the Diamond Witch. Currently knitting off stream. But uh, they stream. Uh, I'll sometimes do crafting things like diamond painting or knitting. Currently, they're working through Disney Dreamlight Valley, which, if you don't know what Disney Dreamlight Valley is, I am oversimplifying here. But the oversimplified version is basically Animal Crossing, but with Disney characters. There is like a story and quest you do, but by and large, I think I think An Disney Animal Crossing gets the point. That's the basic idea of the cross. Um, moving on from there, a sort of collective channel that I watch a lot of is Retro Gaming Live TV, who is actually currently doing their Secret Santa event, which is basically people sign up and they get randomly given games. Usually I think um, uh, console games, because, you know, you can emulate those and you can give those away kind of for free, quote-unquote, um, more easily than you can PC games, let's put it that way. Um, not to say you can't do it with PC games, obviously you can, but... Uh, that's actually a really good idea, Nightbot. I'm gonna quickly get up and do a quick stretch here. Be back in, like, 30 seconds. Oh, wow, yeah. You haven't played Diggies in a while. Uh, yeah. Okay. killing more suits of armor. So yeah, um, but Retro Gaming Live TV does a bunch of other events, usually like weekly events. So um, they're sort of on a... Oh wow, that's cool. Yeah, I remember Darth Maul. Lego streams, like building Legos or Lego video game streams. Building, oh neat, okay. That's cool. Uh, do they, uh, I mean, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but do they stream under the name Darth Maul, or...? Alternately, just tell him I say hi. See if he remembers me. Ah, okay. Oh, cool. Alright. another, I don't know, 15 or so of these, and we'll check what the new HP totals are. I'm only gonna get, like, three levels in each on this one, though. Uh, Cleric, yeah, I'm, uh, I might be able to get four out of Grace. Probably three for the rest. 
Spoon is Aether Spoon, yeah. Yeah, as you can see, I am still MPI, so... I will say I have enjoyed sort of the process of kind of editing the the Twitch streams for YouTube. I'm underscore. Okay. Cool. Right. Yeah. Got it. Two million, and then I'll move more back. I'll check what our HP totals are at that point. I imagine they're still not going to be great. But... The double encounter. I've actually gotten triple encounters before. I fought this, and then immediately fought another battle. Uh, but yeah, so Retro Gaming Live is a cool channel. They do weekly events. Um, I lot I gained one hit point. There's gonna be a lot of one hit point, I suspect. Two, okay. Strength and Vitality, one, okay. Uh, probably be the only two levels for Itsu. Oh, nope, got a third, okay, cool. With one hit point, which is not really surprising. Okay, six, that's nice. Seven, okay. Three. One. Okay. One. Twenty. Nice. All right. One. Six. Okay. So still not very good. I'd like to at least get them up into three digits before I, you know, before I effectively sacrifice them to uh, the post game. But. Right, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I, um... I usually, what I'll do is something similar. I'll... Start with... Yeah, I'll record and live stream both, like I'm doing now. Um, but then we'll just, uh... Uh, not trade. Then I'll usually just go back and edit it out, you know, after that. Go back and edit out the breaks. I keep hitting trade. But in any event, uh, speaking of Retro Gaming Live, another of my favorite streams is, uh, Toad22484. Who I actually first became familiar with uh, during the original Big 20 race, of which there have been 16. Uh, what? That's not. There it is. Okay, okay that's me. I do like I do like putting little transitions since I have to do it anyway. Like, so when you hit pause recording, does it still do one video, or does it do multiples? It sounds like one, which actually would be pretty useful, but... Oh, nice, okay. Yeah, it is pretty neat, okay.
Right, yeah. Okay. Does it automatically make, like, a neat transitions at all, or is it just sort of hard cuts? I mean, audio-wise, mine tend to be sort of hard cuts anyway. Okay, it's just stop and start. Okay. A friendly group of dink. Fight. Crush this dink. <laughs> Itsu Demo just bashed that old man to death. <laughs> Disclaimer, I do not advocate bashing old man to death in real life. I shouldn't have to say that, but I will. But in the context of wizardry, it's fine. Yeah, so, uh, as I was saying, uh, one of my other favorite streamers, Toad22484, does, um, does a lot of, uh, tactical, I guess, turn-based strategy stuff. He's currently doing a playthrough of an XCOM UFO defense mod called the XCOM Files. It's basically a huge expansion of... the game, it, like, basically adds two years onto the start of the game. It shows sort of the formation of XCOM in combination with, like, some ideas from the X-Files. It just adds a whole lot more stuff. So. so that's something neat. Um, I already talked about Xandra Vandra, but Xandra Vandra does primarily Good Morning Mega Man. And occasionally does evening streams, too. Other stuff. Nose was itchy. Okay. Oh, nice. Well, there's, so there's, yeah, there's XCOM UFO Defense, XCOM Terror from the Deep, um, a, a few other games and different genres in the classic series, and then there's, I guess you'd call them modern XCOM, even though I think they're all ten years old now, themselves. Um, Enemy Unknown, Enemy Within, and XCOM. So these are mods for classic XCOM UFO defense. And he played one earlier for Terror from the Deep, called The World of Terrifying Silence. Ah, I'm trying to not be... Yes, I have, yep. That is, that is almost certainly who I've raided over to, and I've raided over to Old XCOM. It is almost certainly Toad 2244. Yeah. Yeah, Toad is one of the ones I have raided into, because they happen to stream at similar times to me. Well, they just stream, they just start early afternoon and go until sometimes quite late. <laughs> 
some of the other people I'm talking about, they're, they don't usually stream at the same time. So. Yeah, Sarah, thank you so much for the sub. A person who does not usually stream at the same time as I do is um, a person named Amethyst Rocks. Amethyst underscore rocks. Who is a person you should check out in like the morning. Uh, she streams primarily Super Mario World ROM hacks. Uh, also does a lot of uh, Link to the Past randomizer. Ah, what is with my nose? No, oh, excuse me. I'm trying to not be super gross, but <laughs> it's not working. But... That's another one. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a season for nasal drip, frankly. <laughs> a lot of. And then I just bounce back and forth with people, honestly. I think those are the main ones to check out, I feel like. I should, I should put like a, uh, but one thing I should do is I should somehow figure out how that, uh, like, recommendation panel that Twitch will give if you go to someone's stream and they're offline. I should figure out how that actually works. Um, another person I watch a lot of is NES Cardinality. Um, NES, like the video game system, and Cardinal, like the bird, I think. a lot of Dragon Warrior randomizer and is currently playing through Ocarina of Time for the first time when not doing Dragon Warrior randomizer races. Uh, does really cool Dragon Warrior randomizer maps, actually. <laughs> So as he's playing a randomizer seed, he'll map it out, but the way he maps it out is... I don't know if just, like, his spatial awareness is just really good, but he can, on a piece of just, like, normal unlined paper, just make a map, and the scale will usually be, like, pretty close and pretty accurate. Um, Nescard primarily does Dragon Warrior 1. Usually, I think most of the uh, most of that community sticks to Dragon Warrior for the just because it's a simple enough game that you can you can basically always finish it in a couple of hours. I would say, unless you specifically put in options to you know, it's super difficult. Um, randomizers, I think, actually exist for all four of the NES Dragon Warriors in. Varying degrees of completion and not soft blocky logic, if that makes sense. I don't know what the first game I beat, like, totally on my own was. Honestly. Because I always had, like, Nintendo Power and things of that sort. Strategy guides, etc. So. Yeah, like the Dragon Warrior 1 randomizer is mature enough and the game is simple enough that, like, you know, it, like, never soft locks. Whereas, uh, I have heard fairly recently of, like, the randomizers for Dragon Warrior 3 and 4. Um, occasionally they will spit out uncompletable seeds for one.
like, oh, oops, the way the chapter one map generated. This signpost is in the way of the dungeon I need to go to in order to get the flying sheep to finish the chapter. I can't get around it, so I guess I'm just stuck. That sort of thing. Uh, 2 point, all right, almost 2.6. Again, we'll try another 3 million, another 3 or so levels for these characters, and we'll see what that gets them. Oops. Uh, what was I doing? Uh, since I'm here, I'm just gonna use this. Just heal up all my characters. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know that I uh, on my own. Yeah. It depends on, like, what you consider on your... I know Dragon Warrior was one of the first games I beat as a kid. It was definitely not on. There was a lot of Nintendo power use in there. And a lot of my dad helping me grind levels. Uh, I think I say as I eat up this Knight of Diamonds armor for probably, like, the 300. I could actually probably do the math on it. Oh, yeah. I won't, but I could if I really felt like it. But either way. Kyle has now level 132. So, in the PC version of Wizardry 1, or the Apple II version, actually, of Wizardry 1, there is a somewhat infamous bug regarding item identification, where a bishop can attempt to identify item 9. Um, now, you may say to yourself, but, empty eye, your maximum number of items a character can have in their inventory is 8. Uh, you are correct. Which is why this is a bug, you see. Uh, by the admission of one Robert Woodhead. Oh, there's the, there it is. There's the triple encounter. Can we get a fourth? Okay. Uh, by the admission of one Robert Woodhead, who is one of the people who worked on the original version of Wizardry 1. Um, in the code to check that you are trying to identify a valid item... Um, which, at a, you know, at a very high level. Mentoring in Murphy's, that's great. Uh, so at, at a very abstract level, a, the code for this would basically be, should be, you know, if item number greater than or equal to one, and item number less than or equal to eight, try to identify item. Otherwise, be like, bro, what are you doing? Um... Instead of an and, they put an or. And... The, the immediate effect of this is that you can attempt to identify item 9. And if you are successful in identifying item 9, your bishop acquires 100 million experience points. Which is enough to... Uh, which is enough to get them to approximately level 220. Um, however, uh, it gets worse. Um, as you probably know, the uh, semi-technical definition of a computer is a machine that takes input and processes it as a series of numbers. And once you get down far enough into the guts of a computer, it interprets everything as ones and zeros, or series of ones and zeros. And one and zero are both numbers. So, put another way, uh, you can try to identify basically every key on your keyboard, and they will do various things. Uh, item H is a fun one. 
Uh, because if you're successful in that, it inflicts a status that isn't even in the original Wizardry 1. Or it is, but it's unused normally. Uh, later ports of various Wizardry games do use that one. It's the Afraid status. Um, which is the status for if a low-level bishop touches an item without identifying it. Uh, they become afraid because they think it might be cursed. And uh, usually just exiting and re-entering the dungeon fixes it. But... Um, but the, uh, the other two big items to identify are item S and item J. I, if I remember correctly, item S gives your bishop 100 million gold, and item J gives the character in the slot below your bishop 100 million experience points. So. It is, a, it is a legendary part of wizardry lore, and in at least some of the ports... Um, it had become such a part of wizardry lore that they were like, you know what, screw it, let's just leave it in. Which I think is very neat. I thought about doing a video just on that. Because it amuses me so much. Two point eight. All right, so we got about I think twenty more. Like Three million. But we'll see where we're at. Yes. So, yeah, Robert Woodhead a year or two ago gave a keynote at some, like, Apple II convention where he talked about this at some length. Where, actually, apparently, the, uh... <laughs> just, they were victims of their own hubris, effectively. Like, that the language they used, which was Apple II Pascal, like, it had this sort of built-in bounce checking that they could have used if they were willing to, you know willing to accept the side effect of basically making the wizardry program bigger and slowing it down, which they weren't willing to do. And then it... It got through QA slash testing because, I guess, in part... Like, you know, 40 years ago, the concept of QA as we know it today, i.e., you know, take your game and try to break it, like, try to break it, do weird things, see how it reacts. Like, apparently that discipline wasn't really a thing yet. Uh, as he put it, all our testers were really good typists, and so just no one ever typoed item 9 and saw what happened in testing. Because just no one thought to do that. Which, you know, nowadays just seems like, you know, I, I just find that concept of QA not really being QA to be quite funny. <laughs> There's Bethesda, yes. Bethesda, uh, makers of, uh, uh, their best well-known game, of course, being, uh, Where's Waldo on NES. Uh, second best well-known game being the NES port of Wayne Gretzky Hockey. I, I, they, they did some other series of games, too. Old Parchments or something? I, I don't know. I, I, guess that, I guess that series is kind of a big deal. Um... 
Oh, their third best known product, of course, the NES version of Home Alone. Uh, which has one of the uh, one of the most tied world records for a speedrun ever. Because it's basically, once you get the setup, it's actually really easy. And it's like just basically a 20 minute auto scroller. You, you survive for 20 minutes, or technically like 19 minutes, 58 seconds, I think it actually is. For whatever reason. Um, okay, I think we're good there. Let's, uh, you know what, Itsu. You gain the honor of Maloring us back home this time. Yeah, I, I have played a little of uh, I played a little of Oblivion on Xbox 360, and I will say I did like it. I did enjoy what I played. Okay, see so what we got here. Kyle and I, one hit point. There's gonna be a lot of one hit points. Oh, ten hit points. Wow, shows my probably it for Kyle. I. Oh no, thirty-four hit points. Of course. Okay, it's a end game probably two levels. Seven. Okay, that's nice. Ghost. Nine. Okay, nice. One. Ten. Okay. Alright, well, you're at three digits anyway. Eleven. Nice. One. 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 Okay. Yeah, I can understand that. But... Mostly, I, I like the item 9 glitch as a retort to um, the, the sort of subset of video game fans who insist that the way games are released nowadays is, like, the worst thing ever because back in the day, people actually cared about their programming and they released complete games that shipped without stupid game-breaking bugs. And if I were to make this video, I would sort of come at it from kind of that angle. Where, like, um, you know. Say something like, to be clear, I don't mean to make fun of developers, because, like, like it or not, making video games is hard. It has always been hard, and while the tools and workflows change and make certain things easier and certain things more difficult, making video games will always be hard. Now, am I making fun of people who insist that there was some sort of golden age where silly game-breaking bugs were never a thing? Yes, absolutely, I am making fun of those people. Yeah. <sighs> yes. Uh, do I want to... Uh, do I want to just... Let's keep going. Let me see if I can at least get Grace up to honor. Okay. And then after that, we'll probably take our chances with this game. At least for now. Yeah. I mean, the other obvious thing is that Wizardry 1, you know, one of the first really big PC games, uh, got releases up to version 2.1, like six months after its initial release. So. Make of that what you will. But again.
yes, I would I would be going after probably frankly like a straw man of a person who you know. Right, yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure even people who say that sort of thing don't truly believe it in the most literal form, you know. Because even, like, console games have different builds and different... You know, different revisions. And you couldn't reliably patch those at all. You know, once, once you had a cartridge, you had a cartridge. Apropos of nothing, you know what I really wish this emulator had? A... a way to configure, like, auto turbo buttons. I don't think this one has. Maybe it does, but... Unless it was E.T., yeah. You can indeed get several sweet emotes by subscribing to the channel. have to give Twitch money, which, yeah, okay, fair. I should set up, like, a Kofi, or I should re-enable my Patreon or something. Except gift subs when provided by it. Yeah, I largely do the same thing. I do subscribe to a few people. Uh, oddly, none of them are the people I've mentioned so far. <laughs> so, uh, a couple more people I watch are, uh, Arcus, A-R-C-U-S, Streams afternoon into evening my time. There's a lot of NES stuff. Currently uh, working through what he calls his Arcathlons, which are five different 10 game marathons on the NES. I think he's doing speedruns of Die Hard for NES. Uh, which is a choice. <laughs> Die Hard NES is a very interesting game in that I don't know if I would call it particularly good, but you can tell it had a lot of care and effort put into it. Even if the even if the execution of the game is just not there a lot of the time. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's why he's doing it. <laughs> Uh, but so, like, there's, you know, the the ending of Die Hard is basically just, you know, a one-screen sort of, you know, still visual and then a bit of text that explains the ending. But there are a lot of these one-screen endings in it that actually cover a lot of different potential situations in the game. Um, Uh, like, there's there's one, for instance, where if you happen to kill Hans, but he also kills you at the same time, um, the game specifically calls this out. It says, you got Hans, but he got you too. Um, and there's, I think, like, six or seven other, you know, kind of specific situations that the game will call out. You can get yourself into them. Again, several of them are you win and several of them are you lose. Yeah.
I, I, I enjoy, like, I, I also enjoy, like, just, you know, hearing that text that you will rarely or never see was coded in the games. Um, I think my favorite example of this is actually Dragon Warrior 3, um, where near the end you watch the, uh, the cutscene battle. And I don't know why I'm so worried about spoiling a 35-year-old game, but basically... You know, there, there's the cutscene battle that always goes one way, and someone, someone actually did analysis of this, and yeah, that you beat it, yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't know. I guess for the benefit of other people watching this, you know, after the fact, you may just be wanting a cozy Wizardry 2 grind stream on YouTube. And then suddenly they get spoilers for Dragon Warrior 3. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so there, there's the cutscene battle that always goes the one way. And I know people have, like, analyzed this. You know, like, done, like, generators to run through every single possibility. And that, like, that is the way that cutscene always plays out. Like, it always... That battle, that cutscene battle always goes the one way. And yet... Just in case, if you hack it, or, you know, or maybe just in case Enix didn't have time to test every possibility, so just in case there is actually a little bit of extra dialogue that covers that covers the other outcome. Um, ultimately, it doesn't change anything. Um, because, uh, effectively that, that extra, that other outcome, it, it basically ends up being a you got Hans, but he got you too situation. Yeah. And you having beaten the game, you know, know where I'm going with this, but for people who don't, you know, even that, you probably kind of figure out what I mean. But I just like that there's that extra little bit of dialogue. You see it a lot more often, actually, in the Dragon Warrior. Speaking of hacking, because they... Uh, the Dragon Warrior 3 randomizer actually makes that battle a true 50-50. It's basically whoever attacks first wins. Equipped the Knight of Diamonds armor. <laughs> Don't drop. I mean, I do want to drop it, but I can't. Equip right. Okay. Back to the door. Um, but yeah, so, uh, somewhere in there, I asked you about dungeon crawlers, and you said, hmm, dungeon crawlers, and that was... That was kind of as far as you got with that thought before I focus on this crazy train. to 4 million, and then I think at that point, um, I think at that point we'll just try some more of this post game and see what happens. Played games with dungeons, yeah. Or I guess wizardry style is how I would, uh, you know, 
phrase it. Because I guess apparently now, like, Dungeon Crawler now refers to stuff like Diablo, which I don't think is correct, but that's apparently how the term is used nowadays? Question mark? I'm doing this thing where I phrase everything as a question? I don't sound very confident about it? It has a technical term I've forgotten? Public speaking people tell you not to do it? Alright, that's enough of that. I mean, I suppose, yeah. I mean, if you want to think of it that way, I suppose. But then... You know. Then, then we're getting into, like, well, the Elman Age series. Um, you know, or any number of, like, successors to wizardry or things in that style. Like, um, The Bard's Tale. Which is... Which was essentially next-generation wizardry, because wizardry... Surtek took their sweet time making a next-generation wizardry, and so they got me into the bunch by games like Bard's Tale. Um, you know. By, by that logic, Bard's Tale would not be a dungeon crawler. It definitely is. It has multiple dungeons, but... I can't remember if any of them are actually called the dungeon in the game. You had, like, the wine cellar, catacombs... You had a castle, two towers... And you had, like, sewers, I think. So yeah, no dungeon, per se. In the bar sale. That was actually a game I played a while back and enjoyed. Yeah, I guess it would be the Apple II GS version of Bard's Tale. It was it was the one included in the quote unquote. It's not actually the new Bard's Tale anymore. The one at the time was the new Bard's Tale, the like 2004 one. like the original trilogy. And then they just re-released like a, uh, I guess a remaster slash release of the original trilogy. Which is kind of cool. There's a lot of sixes and twos. Yeah. Pretty strat sims, okay. Cool. I played a lot of Graveyard Keeper five ish years back. Never did finish it. Not fairly far from it. Never did finish it. You know, I'm I'm actually now curious about if in the NES version, if I do the same thing I did here and bring back the staff of Nilva with a full party, what happens? Do they all get the mark of Nilva?
Anyway. Hope everyone is having a good weekend so far. I hope your weekend is more exciting than me beating up approximately 4,000 suits of armor. Pretty sure that's how many suits of armor. I don't think it's actually 4,000. It probably is about 400, though. More grinding to do. They're, your grinding in wizardry is never done. Um, wizardry can wizardry at any time. Oh, although, um, speaking of, um, speaking of wizardry can wizardry at any time, um, one of the options, one of the old school options you can set in the 0.3 update Um, is that they now have an option for um, the way the way surprise combat worked in Wizardry 2 on and in the NES ports, uh, which is that you cannot you and the enemy cannot cast spells in the opening rounds. Actually, quite nice. I don't know if you can still use spell items in the opening round of battle. Or not. But I know that was, if you remember, I mentioned a rescue expedition I had to do, and that was one of the main reasons I had to do a rescue expedition in the first place, was because the uh, the mini-boss battle surprised me, and I got spelled nearly to death in turn one, and then I got bad turn ordered in turn two, so my mage died before he could cast the spell that would have given me a chance. Which is really terrible, horrible, no good, very bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know I have two separate videos on my YouTube channel now, one of which is called Wizardry Can Wizardry at Any Time, I'm pretty sure. And then another one just called Wiz Go and Give It To Ya. Like the DMX song, X Go and Give It To Ya. Um, that was... Uh, I think that was the one where I lost shoes, where I lost the second page. So... We are so close to 4 million experience points. <laughs> yeah. I know one of the things I actually need to do is I actually need to go back and play the NES version of Wizardry 2 just to see if the uh, the intro of this music that is actually like the intro like it is here or if it's the start of the proper battle theme and it does the do 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 from Wizardry 1. This should get me to four. Yes. Okay. Leave it at that. You, my lore, back to here. Stairs will take them. Yeah, sorry. Let's. Alright, one hit point for Kylai. 27 hit points for Kylai. That's me. One hit point for Kylai. Alright, Itsu, what do you got for me? One, okay. One. Okay. Good stuff. One guy. One. One. Unimpressive. 
Alright, come on, there's four. Alright, that's something. Four, okay. Four? One. One more level? So I need two more levels. How many more? How many experiences you need for the next level? Oh, uh, you're yeah, right. Uh, okay. <sighs> All right. I would be lying if I said I was a hundred percent confident here. But we're gonna roll with it anyway. Primarily because I am absolutely sick of this grind, I'm not gonna lie. Um, yeah, okay, that'll... Gonna have to. Um, so you trade the Cod's armor back to Kyle. I did remember to reorder this time, so that's good, yes. I don't always remember to do that. Rathenir, Cod's armor, Cod's shield. Book we uh yes, we will invoke the book. We'll then find uh well I got to Itsu first, so fine. We will cast the protect spell. Yeah. So in front of you reads, yep, okay. My map's out here. So now that I have the coin, I can just go this way. Yep, have the coin. This time. There's down. Okay. I don't like the hit points of Toast and Grace, as I mentioned. But I'm gonna try to roll with it, and we'll see what we'll see where we get. A long trip. Here, okay. What do we got? I surprise monster. All right, that's nice. Three damned, five unholy terrors, four unholy terrors. Okay, that's nice. I dispel the damned or the unholy terrors. Probably not. That's okay. Okay, uh, oh right, the Unholy Terrors, which were- yeah, I remember these now. That's right. Yeah, they were- they were naked silhouettes of women, it looks like. Yes, okay. I remember now. Okay. Yeah, naked ladies, terrifying. Yes. Okay, we got there. All right, eight chest, loading box, disarmed it. Silver found us. Kyle, I found an amulet. Interesting. Uh, I need to. I need to swap some items here. Um, I don't know that I necessarily want. Give you those. Uh, I'm gonna also swap the coin for one of the potions. So I don't want to lose the coin if we lose Itsu. And we're much more likely, I think, to lose Itsu than we are Mercury. So, alright, with that. What? And sword. Hunk of intellect. Interesting. And a parry. Dagger. All right. Uh, let's trade. Brace the parry. Um. Is there anyone who can really? If the Ankh of intellect does what I think it does, is there anyone in my party who can actually really use it besides Eatsy? Not really. Um. I guess Kyli. Kyle has the book, so no. Um, take that back. Alright, uh, we'll just keep it in our inventory for now. Trade. 
short sword. Okay. Uh, okay. So we go this way. Alright. So this is going to be another battle? Oh, it wasn't. Okay. Alright, so I have a couple different ways I can go here. Uh, alright, so I'm going to go in here. Money makes the mare go. Will you pay? How much money is the thing? Um, take the gold. Okay, so we actually had a pretty decent chunk of gold. Who will pay? Uh, I guess Grace will pay at this point. Thank you. Party is full, okay. Okay, so that was 250,000 gold to teleport back to the castle. Okay. Well, at least I know that now. Okay. Oh, uh, health check. Good idea. Get up, I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, take the gold back. So who actually had that onk? Who did I end up giving it to? I could sell the coin of the damned for 500 gold if I wanted to, that's neat. Good. Onk of intellect, that is a lot of money. The problem is, Itsu, if, it's, if it does what I think it does, Itsu is already at max IQ. I could, I guess, do this. I could give it to Otterboos, who I'm never going to use. You know what? Yeah, we might as well. Otterboos, Anka Vinerite. Right. Equip, Anka Vinerite. Why invoke the special power? No. So you have 17 IQ. 19 IQ. Okay, so it raises IQ by two. Right. Kind of what I expected. Alright, move you. Re add Kyle. Uh, oh, I need to. Okay. Yep, now we know. I should probably write that down somewhere. Okay. 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 So, uh, reorder. Kyle, I, Silver, Mercury. Yep, that looks good. Ah, uh, Hitsu. Porphic. Whip, Wrath, Mirror, Cod's Armor, Cod's Shield, Helm of Evil, Blood of Copper, Book, Invoke, Special Power, Book, yes. When he reads, yep. Be a long trip. Counter. Two Nightmares. Two Nightmares, one Strange Animal, three Nightmares. Okay. This sounds kind of nasty. Um, so Itsu is going to chuck a second tilt away. Yep, that's what I was worried about. Okay. Uh, it was well worth the... Uh... Oh, I found Helm, Mercury found Shield. That was well worth the... Well worth the tilt away cast, I think. Because that breath would have been a lot nastier otherwise. Uh, 
Um, one of the other actually new kind of quality of life options in 0.3 approving grounds is, um, which this reminded me, is that, um, so normally in, uh, in wizardry, in basically all versions of wizardry, if you basically target something that's already dead, you effectively lose the action. Um, the, the 0.3 update has as an option, you can make that so that's not the case, um, where if you cast a spell on a dead group or a dead enemy, it will try to redirect the spell. And if you've already won the battle, it just won't cast the spell at all, um, versus casting it at nothing and you losing it. I love hangovers, that's bad. Shield of Phalanx is pretty nice. Alright. Um, can anyone else use the Shield of Phalanx, I wonder? Toast use it now, alright. And Grace use it. Okay, but... Uh, and then I'm gonna just drop that with hangovers. I got another encounter. Oh boy. Hit Fiend, oh good. Four fit fiends, two caldari, two mists. Okay. Ow! Okay, I think we're okay. Okay. Ugh, that was frightening. All right. This is why I wasn't super pleased with my hit points, by the way. Friendly group of Lycurgus. I'm tempted to just leave them alone, honestly. I think I'm gonna do that, actually. Got lucky. Oh, an encounter. Monster surprised you. Great. All vampires. <laughs> okay. Fine. Restrained two levels. Luckily, I did some grinding with Mercury prior to this, so they gained about seven or eight levels, so they're still above where they were prior to today, or prior to yesterday. Prior to my doing try something. I don't expect this to actually work, but I expect these to immediately fizzle out. Yeah, okay. Alright, so let me just make sure I'm where I think I am. Uh, let's see, that's 11.14. Again and again! Two. 
Do I play other games in my downtime? Uh, I do. I surprise monster. Three greater devils. Oh, that sounds fun. Um, so I play some. I play F zero ninety nine. I play. Um, I'm working my way through Pikmin two and Super Mario Wonder, both pretty slowly though. Oh, okay. Ow! You don't do that, please. Um, I have forgotten which way I'm going, which is not great. Um, either way, I think I did that. Okay, um... Should we be at 15, or it looks like 15-6? Yes, okay. Uh, alright, that's the right way. That's 15-5, good. Oops, what am I doing? That's wrong. So this is going to presumably be a... Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah, okay. Four Incubi, four demonic figures. Those are greater demons, aren't they? Those are greater demons. Great. I do Itsu. And Itsu's dad, great. Cool, awesome turn order. Amazing. Oh, they were more Incubi, okay. And Silver's Drain a level, great. Well, I can't Kelfo, and I can't... Um, okay, let's, uh... Let me make sure I'm where I think I am. Yeah, it's zero four. okay. Um, yeah, we're gonna bail out here. Um, okay, Temple of Cons. Um... Um, Kyle I has all my gold again, right? Actually, I think we all have a decent amount of gold. Well, not enough to pay for this, but... Okay, um... Uh, Kyle I. Let's try this. It's a demo is cured. Okay. Um, 
All right, well, let's see how Toast and Grace do. Toast is need cut Orto now. Great, okay. Well, let's try Grace first. Grace is cured, okay. Um, that's fine, but... Yeah, we, uh, well, need to try this and hope it works. Ah. Uh. Oh, fingers crossed. Toast is buried, great. Well, I tried. I probably should have just called it after the grinding, honestly. Then maybe done some more grinding over the weekend, and then tried this. But, uh, yeah. Well, oh. Sacrificial Toast, you lived up to your name. Uh, Alright, so, uh, we need a new cleric. New priest. Um, I probably should have seen what items they had. We do. You did! Uh, okay, we have the book. We have the coin. Mercury is the coin. Okay. Right. We just moddy everyone here. Whoops. So, first things first, let's get Kyolai another level. 43 more hit points, sure. Pitsu gains one whole hit point, alright, that's not gonna help their survivability. Um, okay. I don't really want to take another two hours on stream to grind up another cleric, frankly, or priest. So, um,. I think we are going to call it a stream here. We can now add a toast to the casualty list. Need to go back and actually see. So we had tubes. I think I lost lag first, then snurdly. And there is the very first person I lost. And I feel upset that I can't remember who it was now. But We'll go back. <laughs> anyway, uh, that is going to do it for me for today. We have reached the end of stream number 71. Um, I will say bye, YouTube.